this chapter I'm going to um, explain some of um, basic forms of different types of functions right we call this library of functions right library of functions so this topic is pretty um, relatively speaking easy easier than other other topic there's nothing much to um, understand um, basically you have to memorize the basic format of this each different function first one that I'd like to show you is constant function constant function so as the name suggests this constant function is basically a simple number so the basic format is fx equal b for some reason they use b and they say this b is a real number meaning what this b is constant all right simple number i mean Example would be like fx equal 2, right? fx equal 2. So, you know, if you really think about this, this is input value x, and the reason why we use this input value as x as a variable, meaning input value can also vary, right? It, it changes. Um, it could be any number, it could be 5, it could be 2, it could be 2 million, it could be any number. But what's the output? What's the output? Output is always 2. So it doesn't matter what, what's coming in in that function, it always comes out as 2. That's what it means. That's what they mean by the constant function. Yes. So how do we graph this? Well. So if you have like, let me try, okay, so let's say this is f of x, this is x, then the straight line, that point must be 2. So when x equals 0, what's fx going to be? 2. But let's say when x equal 2, y is also 2. When x equal 3, for example, y fx is 2. So no matter what x value that you have, it always comes out as 2. That's why it's called constant function. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Constant and it always comes out as 2. I mean, in this case, 2. So this is what we call the constant function. Okay, the next one that I'd like to show you is identity function. Identity function. So this identity function looks like this. f of x equal x. So before we jump in and check the graph I want you to take a good look at this function so what's the input value input value is this x what's the output value output value is also x so what does that mean x comes in comes in and x comes out x goes in x goes out so i mean no wonder they call this identity function because whatever comes in it spits out exactly same number right same number right same term so how do we graph this now think about this right let's say when this is f of x say this is x when x equals 0 
what comes out? 0, which is that point. When x equal 1, what will come out? 1 will come out. So when x equal 1, the y dfx is also going to be 1. Say this is 1, this is 1. When x goes, if 2 goes in, what comes out? 2 comes out. So if 2 goes in, then 2 comes out. That's this point. What about negative? When negative 1 goes in, what comes out? Negative 1 comes out, which is that point. You get the idea. So it looks like it's going to be that type of straight line. And that's going to be what we call identity function. Mm. You know, makes a lot of sense, right? Identity function, whatever comes in, what comes out, so it becomes this straight line. Next one is square function. Square function. I mean, can you guess what this square function should look like? fx equal x square. So x goes in. What happened to that x? When it comes out, it comes out as x square. It's squared. Right? So we call this square function. So you know, for example, if 1 goes in, what comes out? 1 square, which is just 1. If 2 goes in, what comes out? 2 comes out. And 3 goes in, what comes out? 9 comes out. And, well, not that straight. This function looks like this. So it will be this nice, technically it should be U-shaped curve. U-shaped curve and this is fx and this is x. So we'll talk a lot more about this U-shaped curve in a later chapter. But for now, for us, that U-shaped curve that looks like this is known as square function. Okay. Next one, cube function. I mean, can can you guess what it looks like? Well, if the square function looks like fx equal x square, cube function should be fx equal x to the cube course. So whatever whatever goes in, it'll be not squared, but now this time it's going to be cubed. So graph of this function looks like this. Okay? So I want you to um, remember the general shape of this what's called the cube function, right? The cube function. Okay, the next one is square root function. Square root function. All right, so can we guess what it looks like? course fx equal square root of x right we call this square root function so square root function you know can this x be negative number answer is no because inside square root 
must be always a positive number or it could be zero but it cannot be a negative number i mean at at this level it cannot be a negative number if you take a couple more math course you will come across um, the topic of imaginary number and it is allowed to have a negative number inside square root then it becomes imaginary but uh, for now for us square root function x must be positive and it looks like this right square root function okay next one is cube root function cube root function okay so you know going back to square root function we didn't really see any number in here but technically speaking if there is nothing there that means there is like hidden two there right if there's if you don't really if you didn't write anything then then there's a hidden two there so the q root function as you guessed it will be q root of x but because this is q root now we actually have to write the small number 3 right there so what does q root function oops not that straight a uh, little better look like q root function should look like this right if the uh, function looks like this then that's q root function okay the next one that i like to show you is what's called reciprocal function reciprocal function so what do you think well whatever goes in it'll be reciprocal to that meaning it'll be flipped whatever goes in it'll be flipped and becomes one over whatever goes in that's reciprocal function so what should be the graph of reciprocal function well graph of reciprocal function looks like this right so reciprocal function looks like this now the next one is what we call absolute value function absolute value function okay absolute value function looks like this fx equal absolute value of x well i don't like this one should be straight down yeah. all right that's a little better well let's pretend that it's just a perfect straight down and that's the um, absolute value function all right so absolute value function what does this vertical bar means it means something like this whatever comes in it always comes out as positive number that's what absolute value function um, means that's what absolute value value means right basically whatever goes in it comes out as positive right? whatever goes in it comes out as positive so the graph however of this function looks like 
this by the V shape. It looks like this. Okay. Um, and you know, formal definition of absolute value function looks like this. Let me just add this. Formal definition of absolute absolute value function. This becomes x if x is greater or equal to zero, and it becomes negative x if x is smaller than zero. Hmm. So absolute value of value function. What's the result? Becomes x. Whatever goes in itself. If this original value that goes in, if that value is greater or equal to zero, meaning a positive number, or it could be zero, then the result is going to be the same number. However, what goes in is that x is less than zero. What does that mean? Positive or negative number? less than zero. Negative number, of course. If negative number goes in, what comes out? Negative of that number. Remember, the number that goes in, this x is negative number. That's why you need another negative to cancel out that negative and becomes positive number. So this is the formal definition of um, absolute value function. And the last one is greatest integer function. Also known as step function. So you know, we write this fx as int of x and sometimes in some of those reference book you probably seen something like this notation. That also means the um, greatest integer function. Also, th this function is also known as the step function. So, what do they do? Well, whatever goes in, whatever the input value is are, it's only going to take the integer part of that number. Hmm. Whatever that means, right? Whatever that means. Well, it means something like this. If x equal 0 0.72, this result of this f of x is going to be, you are only going to take this integer part, so result is going to be 0. Right. Let me give you another one, another one. So let's say if x equal 2.15, what f of x should be? Well, as I said, you're only going to take this integer part as a number. So answer must be 2. That's what this greatest integer functions um, means. That's how they define it. So what's the graph of this function should look like? Well, it looks like this. From 0 to say 0 to 1, if it's 1 there, it's going to be 
all zero and we're gonna have this open circle like that not the closed one but from one to two say 1.72 what's the answer answer must be one so any value between one and two result is going to be one so we close it and we make it open circle like that and then the pattern continue if it's three then it's going to be two but it's going to be closed here and then open right above three and so forth so this side as well so this is going to be open and closed and that's negative one and that's negative one and so forth i mean you can you can see why people call this sometimes a step function so it looks like um laying down a step right so this is you know all these functions that we just checked is a typical example of different types and shapes of function okay all right